I've noticed that people like the English rune poem, but I think they might kind of like it too much. And what I mean by that is they seem to get a lot of their information from it and only it, and they also are ignorant about some of the uh, some of the details of the English rune poem, and so they draw conclusions that are pretty dubious. Okay, so one really big thing I have to point out is that the English rune poem burned up in 1731, the version that we're aware of, uh, which was from Cotton Otho B. 10. So that manuscript is gone, but thankfully someone named George Hicks made a copy, and this is a copy. But there's a problem, and that is this. So the same man made a copy of Cotton to Mission A9, but we still have the original, and we can see that there are some mistakes in the modern copy. So, for example, this right here, this is not an R. This is an insular S. And this is not an R rune. This is what is called the uh, bookhand S rune. So it's a variant of the S rune. But whoever was in charge of copying this information over made a mistake. They saw the insular S as the letter R, and so they apparently tried to correct the rune, and they turned it into an R rune. So this was perfectly fine and accurate, but the modern person was ignorant, apparently, and messed it up. Uh, there's some other stuff like that. Uh, for example, this character being here gives it too much, uh, too much honor, I guess you could say, because this is where it actually shows up, and you can see it's written in fainter ink. There seem to have been two writers who made this, uh, well, what you see before you. So the first one did the runes, and they did these uh, Latin transliterations, but then a, a later hand came by, and they didn't use insular forms of the characters of the uh, Latin letters. They used Caroline forms. So you can see the G is different. So it's a different, it's different handwriting. And this also implies that whoever wrote this was influenced by French because these letter forms entered England through the French. Uh, so that's, that's a reason to think that whoever wrote the fainter stuff uh, was from a later date, probably after the Norman invasion. And so, yeah, the modern copy, you wouldn't know that, though. That's, that's my point, is you wouldn't know that if we didn't have the uh, original version of this. So it's possible for there to be some modern corruption in the English rune poem. Uh, so that's part of the problem, is people really love the English rune poem, and they, they base a lot of their stuff on it. But for all we know, there's little bits of corruption in here. Something we know is that this part isn't from the original English rune poem because it is ripped directly out of Cotton Demission. So, for example, take a look at this here. So there's an insular G and the letter E with a weird loop on it. Well, that comes from right here directly. And there are some mistakes in Cotton Demission that were carried over. Uh, so take a look at this D here and this M here. These are wrong transliterations. And yet, over here, we see the same exact wrong uh, transliterations written in exactly the same way. So it's really obvious if you compare this section of the modern English rune poem to Cotton Demission that this is from Cotton Demission and is therefore not from the original English rune poem. Uh, and so, yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe this whole section here is also not from the original rune poem. So now with that context, take a look at this. A lot of people for a long time have been taking this segment here and creating a compound word out of it, even though the first word might not even be from the same manuscript as the second word. Uh, and before they do that, they make some adjustments to this word here. They assume that this is a, a, a separate word, ard, and so they uh, split it off, and then they take the first segment here, and they assume that it is actually the word sedge, even though what's written here looks more like sech or sec. But they assume that this is sedge, and then they create a compound word, uh, and then they say, hey guys, look, this is the name of the X rune. The name of the X rune is elk sedge. Um, and what's really weird is 
they're not consistent about that because if if that's really if they think that that's a valid way to derive the name of the rune then why don't they do it up here with the g rune why don't they look at this here and see that the segment the little riddle here is about yivu gumina it's about gift of men right uh, by their logic this must therefore be the name of the g rune so this is all just really weird and there's not any reason to be doing this because all we have to do is look at the other manuscripts that tell us the name of the x rune and we'll see that they agree with what's written right here they agree that it is a single segment and that it is something along the lines of elks or ilks or elks or eelks um so yeah if you just look at the other manuscripts if you don't if you don't spend all your time looking only at the English rune poem, then you're gonna get better results. And it's also good if you learn the context of the English rune poem and learn that it's not really as tight as it seems. Here's another problem. People look at this here, Eoch, and then they come to the conclusion that this rune must have therefore stood for El. Uh, that may have been true for some people, but when you look at the known inscriptions, when you look at the uh, known coins, runic coins, and when you look at two other manuscripts, uh, the evidence there points instead to the rune having the sound values of E and Ch. But because people are, for some reason, people are just so um, entranced by the rune poem, they take this and they ignore or are unaware of the fact that there's more evidence for this than there is for this. I wouldn't necessarily mind um, adding up all of the sources and saying that there's some evidence for this, but it's just not nearly as strong as the evidence for this. But you wouldn't know that if you go onto the internet and you look up uh, uh, information about English runes. Um, it seems like most of the sites base a lot of their information on the English rune poem and not on the other sources.